Good evening. Welcome to the regular meeting for the Lewiston City Council of Monday, November 24th. We'll call this meeting to order. Uh, first order of business of the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you. Our first item of business will be the citizen comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to address the council on agenda items or other items they wish to bring to the attention of the city council. Citizens are encouraged to discuss operational issues in advance with the city manager and in consideration of others wishing to speak. Please limit remarks to three minutes. Do we have any citizen comments tonight? Mr. Lowman, name and address for the record, please. Thank you. Morgan Lohman. Morgan Lohman. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, 3810 Country Club, uh, Lewis Nido. Uh, sorry for short notice, and I wasn't able to contact any managers about this meeting. But I'd like to introduce myself and thank you for the three minutes I have. Um, my name is Morgan Lohman. I'm a owner of Lohman Helicopter um, based here in the Lewis Clark Valley. I have something I want to hand you guys out real quick. I can. You can go longer than three minutes, but not much. <laughs> Earlier this spring, we purchased a hangar at the Lewiston Airport. Uh, spent quite a few months work, uh, working with the airport, Federal Aviation Administration, Airport Building Authority to uh, develop the property and use it for uh, commercial use for a uh, service station to maintain aircraft and to base our helicopters there as well. Yes, uh, ground ship pink hangar is the uh, our vicinity. Those, I make photocopies of those, so just share those. So after months of working with the Airport Authority Board and Federal Aviation, uh, we were blessed to expand our hangar to uh, accommodate the uh, services we wanted to provide to general aviation community. We signed a new lease with the Airport Authority Board on or about uh, June this year. Do, uh, it's a commercial lease, commercial lease rate. We carry commercial insurance limits. Um, approximately two weeks ago, the new airport manager told us we had to cease operations of land or aircraft. This isn't working. Yeah, can you? Keep it um, approximately two weeks ago, we were told we had to stop landing at the uh, hangar. Um, we are not violating any federal aviation regulation rules. We are not, we're fully in compliance with the airport minimum standards and our lease. Um, the airport authority board voted a couple nights ago to uh, make a cease and desist landing at our hangar. Uh, the main reason is basically we just don't fit in. Um, anyhow, if we're forced to stop landing, it's gonna be detrimental to our business. The reason why I gave you that photo is that's a 30,000 square foot facility we would like to develop on the south side, but we can't work with the airport on small issues. We're certainly not going to invest several million dollars on a big issue. We generate literally millions of dollars each year, uh, tax revenue to the city, state of Idaho, um, have over a dozen employees, and I'm just... Um, having some issues here and uh, just want to make you guys aware of that so it's my understanding the airport was supposed to promote business not hinder it. Uh, this is a legal description of where we're at I only have one copy of that but if you guys want to hang on to that um, you can look at that so anyways we're uh, completely playing by the rules That's, uh, if you have any questions mr. Blakey um, if the fences can't be mended, sir, do you have an option to take your business somewhere else? Right. Yes. We invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in this, though. So it's... Right. Um, Where would you take your business? To the county. You relocate in the county. With this building, um, we're going to use local contractors from HVAC to legislation to builder guys. The project alone is going to you know, generate some good money for some local guys in town. 
Um, we bring, we hired two out-of-state pilots this year to be moving to the valley. These guys are six-figure folks. We're going to buy pickups in town, you know, go shopping at the stores. So it's, um, we're here to stay, create jobs, and generate some cash, and uh, pay our taxes. And we'll move to the county, yeah, that's, that's that simple. Councilor Daniel. Uh, it's more of a question for Mr. Bennett. Uh, this is the first time I've even heard of this, and you're saying that the authority voted on a couple days ago, so I was going to request that Mr. Bennett, if you could maybe look into it for us and get us a kind of a report of what what's transpired. And, oh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, Mr. Honor, what's changed between how you're operating your business now and how you were operating it before? Obviously, something must have happened to... Uh, so that the airport board would make some kind of a change in the way they've been treating you in the, you know, currently. We were never at the airport before. We moved up there, and there was an understanding that we would sometimes taxi aircraft, uh -huh. tow them, and fly them in. The, the truth of the matter is, is the neighbors, the, the old boys have been there for a while, just don't like somebody new on the block. Um, what irritates me more than anything is there's buildings on that airport that are full of cars, Race boats, not aircraft. We carry the right insurance. We pay the premium prices. I mean, we're doing everything above board. And this other stuff is just, it's not even being addressed. So, they don't like the, they don't like the rotorcraft or where the airplanes are at. It's just, right where our property lies, for people to exit the airport, it makes it much easier for the, the guys in their cars driving out to basically drive all the way across our leasehold, lines them up to the gate easier. It's really, by us being there, it makes their <coughs> exiting the airport a little bit more difficult. Uh, we've had some property stolen last week um, from behind the locked gate from somebody in the neighborhood. So it's um, hasn't been a very good situation. And the, making us Keeping us from landing has been more of a priority than finding out who's stealing our stuff. So was there a particular reason given or just they felt um, you weren't in compliance or? It's windy, it's dusty. Um, rotor wash. Rotor wash, the, uh, one of the uh, reasons uh, Mr. McLaughlin airport manager gave was the, um, we take gate 29, everybody's familiar with the old the storage sheds that do the whoop-de-whoop. So when we depart we, O'Connor Road, we'll take off that direction, or we'll do a high hover taxi over to the runways. So. Okay. Yes. Uh, Is there not already helicopter service there? Are you competing with somebody? Are you? You've been there for a long time, correct? No, no, no. Just we just started flying out of there a couple months ago. Life Flight Life is in the vicinity. Is there. But it's, we don't compete against each other. And there has been no other helicopter service out of there besides Life Flight. There's a flight school that is based in the area. They happen to trailer their aircraft in and out. Um, but we were told we had till the 5th to get tugs and, um, or carts to relocate our aircraft. And these maps I've given are other areas where aircraft or a helicopter can take off and depart. They're, First of all, they said we couldn't land there anymore. Didn't say where we could land, though. Just said not there. So the areas I indicated on these maps are known areas where helicopters can't take off and go. But if we're picking up folks from the fishing game or somebody from a Vista, we can't take them out in that area. We are literally would take members of the public past where Delta Airlines comes in in Alaska. The air traffic out front where we might have to or are supposed to go is, has a lot of volume, a lot of risk. A helicopter's blades are up here, making wind, and they're saying that they're more dangerous here than a, a twin turboprop or an airplane down low. As a, I mean, we can't walk into helicopter blades like so. The, the risk thing where we're at is really the lowest aircraft traffic. If we were made to move to one of those areas I depicted, um, a lot more opportunity for risk out there. So, so, so the decision, the decision. I guess a couple questions. One is your, the decision not to let you go there is not a safety issue. They're claiming it, or to, to, to cease operations where we're at, they're saying it is safety. It's an FAA, a violation of some FAA rules. No. Airport control tower has no authority there. It's a non-movement area. The FAA comes to our place and inspects it. We're not violating any federal aviation right. rules. We're not violating the, air tra the traffic, the control tower. 
That's why, of course, I guess you, unless you fly, you would know this, but as a pilot, when you say, hey, I'm direct to the Loman hangar, they always say, land at your own risk. Or, you're cleared to your hangar, land at your own risk. So anytime you're in a non-movement area or an off the airport tower, always says, land at your own risk. That's how they, that's the legal word you got to use. Councilor Randall. Uh, the city and the county both entered into an agreement that the airport authority would be the one controlling the airport, managing it for the city and the county. And I don't think it's appropriate for us to even be questioning the airport authority. It's their job to take care of the airport, and they're the ones that set the rules and regulations, and it's for us to let them handle it, not to override them. If we override them, then uh, their, their situation would be, why bother even being the authority? So I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't think we should even be discussing this. If I may, um, and the gentleman brings up a good point, and I'm not looking at overriding anybody at this point in time, but I think it would be prudent for us to have Mr. Bennett communicate with the Joint Airport Authority that part I to, don't have a problem with. To find out what the real issues are, because uh, Mr. Morgan does have a fair number of aircraft, and you know if he's going to be wanting to build out there, obviously that's not going to happen overnight on the south side, um, and he needs a place to operate his business. And if he's put out of business, then we're the lesser for it. The airport is, the city is. I, so. I think it would be, be after Jim talks to the uh, airport authority, I think maybe we could ask them to, re them to reconsider and go from that point. I have a problem hearing you with the mic. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. We'd like to be there as short amount of time as possible, but like you said, we do need to generate revenue somewhere. We spend a lot of money to be there. Yes. What is, what is the appeals process when the Airport Authority Board makes a decision? Is there one? I, that part, I don't know. I mean, I was with the council when we created the Joint Airport Authority. And to be honest with you, sir, I don't have an answer to that. And I don't know if Mr. Bennett Yeah, has I don't know the answer either. to that question either. Um, well, we'd have to go back and look at the... Uh, um, agreement between the county and the city and the airport authority but i i would tend to agree with mr uh, councillor randall i don't think we have any authority whatsoever the, because we mr mayor board. members of the council they may have some recourse in court <coughs> uh, petition for judicial review of an administrative decision or something like that but i'm not aware of any appeal directly to the city council or the, or the county commission okay. councillor daniel still it's a local business we should at least you know he's here mm -hmm. at the city council yeah. meeting talking about property we own i mean i think Absolutely. we we owe it to them to at least do our due dil diligence and at least find out what's going on and that's why i suggested having yeah. mr bennett nope certainly so. yes. See, our lease says we, we have permission to conduct commercial operations we specifically want to do a repair station which means you got to fly aircraft in and out i can't buy a tug for a dozen different aircraft i mean it's in the lease i'm just like if you don't want us to land there you should put it in the lease not even an iota, a breath, murmured about not landing there. Had we couldn't land there, we would not have bought the building. We have not spent a year <laughs> trying to make it all happen. I mean, we're close to half a million bucks into this thing, so it's not just going to roll over here. Well, I... Oh, Anyhow, I, I just want to let make you all aware of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm going to make an assumption that um, besides talking to us, did you take the time to visit at the county meeting today and... and uh, and make your same presentation there? No, I, no, sir. I, I just make that recommendation. And two, I'm, I also assume you probably have hired legal representation. Yes. Here. Okay. I, uh, yeah, Mr. Loman, I appreciate you coming here and bringing us aware of this. Um, we'll have the city manager mm -hmm. in contact with the Joint Airport Authority and see if we can't find out something, but, uh, at this point, since we did cede operations we, to the Joint Airport Authority, uh, we're, we're the landowner. Right. We're not the business manager. But you're, and you're, but your we, I, and I'm not.
trying to blow you off at all. It's just I think uh, it might take a few days to start I would like some conversations. Okay. How's that? We asked Mr. McLaughlin to reconsider. Uh, the night of the meeting, they said, uh, how much time do you need to buy a, a tug? Well, I didn't know. That would, um, they're, by the way, these uh, towing devices are anywhere from ten to 20000 a piece. So I said, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 days. Well, I immediately got a quote the next day, and they're 30 plus days, and they're anywhere from, like I said, ten plus thousand dollars. So a day 10 is going to roll around. They want us to stop flying. If I ordered a tug yesterday, I'm not going to see one until after Christmas. I can't move the aircraft out there. So, so we asked Mr. McLaughlin to reconsider, and he still said, no, you're done the 10th. And we told him we can't get a tug for more than 30 days. We told him the costs. We also asked him if we could be involved with what he's calling his investigation with the FAA on the legality of this. Um, so there's two sides to be heard, but um, he uh, dug his heels in. We did not, didn't get an extension. So what if he rules in six months that we can legally land there? What am I supposed to do with $30,000 or $40,000 in tugs I don't want? I mean, does the airport authority board want to buy them back from me? I don't need them. So we're not getting um, no joy from the airport manager. Okay. Anyhow, that's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Thank Thanks you. for your time. Appreciate it. You bet. Okay. So I'll contact the airport authority tomorrow and try and get uh, some more background information for all yeah, of you. Please keep on, us in touch. And let you know, um, you know what the uh, situation is, and, and we'll okay. take it from there. When's the next JA meeting, Councilor Randall, or do you know? Uh, I'm not sure because they said I'm at each meeting, so. Okay. Hopefully next month. Maybe Jackie knows because she was there. Okay. Do we have any other citizen comments? <laughs> Ms. Grayback, name and address for the record, please. Deanne Grayback, 512 24th Street, North Lewiston, Idaho. And I'm a member of Friends of the Airport. What you just heard is totally out of context here. Um, uh, Commissioner um, Randall is absolutely right. There are two members of the airport authority that this body has appointed to that board, as did um, the uh, county appoint to. The four of them appointed the fifth. Now, you have instructed them through the joint powers agreement to run the airport. And at that point, you all should not even be involved. If there's a lawsuit coming, certainly you would be made aware of it. But there, it's in the exploration um, um, area at this point. I sat in a meeting, and there are others in this room that sat in a meeting, that said there would not be any takeoff and landing in front of, of the Peterson hangar that Loman now occupies. And um, uh, Odenata also has a helicopter facility at the airport. They take a tug and take their machines out from their hangar area to to start them up and, uh, and land them. And while we were in the meeting, Mrs. Lohman said that they would do the same thing. Now, that was denied at the uh, last airport authority meeting. You know, like I say, it's, this isn't your business at this point. It belongs at the airport. Let them do their job. Thank you, ma'am. Any other citizen comments this evening? <laughs> Mike Lorenz, 458 Crestline Circle Drive. Oh, I just want to make a, <clears throat> a few comments on a couple of subjects now that we're done and over with with our ordinance and now I think it's time for you guys to step up and kind of deal with some stuff that 
probably would benefit the majority of the taxpayers and not the minority. So hopefully next year, after the holidays are over, you guys will take care of <clears throat> looking into some of our city expenditures, especially our $200 cow allowance we pay to people to drive to work, our cell phone usage. I know we got a contract on it, but I don't think 139 employees in the city of Lewis don't need a cell phone. You pay them a stipend or whatever. Like I said, you guys are the stewards of the taxpayers' money. A um, couple other things. I think next year you really need to delve into why. You know, we have no mutual aid declaration. We have no mutual aid with Potlatch, you know, the biggest employer in a city across the river. And it was all politics. It was personality issues more than anything. So anyway, I think that's something you guys need to step up to the plate and deal with instead of dancing around with all these, as far as I'm going to, insignificant issues. Um, I got some, I got a handout here. that this handout is definitely dated but it is still part of the reason why there is no mutual aid with the city of Clarkson it was just all about you know poor sports and not getting their way and I think it's time for you as a council to step up and pretty much start telling the employees what they're going to do instead of the employees telling us what they're going to do so hopefully next year you will take some of this stuff to heart and step up to the plate and Kind of take care of the the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Colby Ford, 1041 Hemlock Ave, Lewiston, Idaho. Mine will be very brief. Uh, as before, we've discussed the measure basically outlining the state's uh, law on um, discharging a firearm within the city limits. It sits before you. I'm kind of here just to answer any questions if there is any of the city council or the mayor at this time or any of the citizens. Do you have any questions? Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Ladies you and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. you. Have any other citizen comments this evening? Okay, well, seeing none. Um, Moving on to our next item is presentations. And uh, this is a presentation of a plaque to Doug Black for 12 years of volunteer service on the Solid Waste Advisory Commission. Fortunately, we don't have the plaque, but we do have Mr. Black here. Would you please come down, sir? Thank you, Mr. Nope. Is that on? Can you hear? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, City Council. Yes, um, it certainly is an honor to uh, recognize uh, Mr. Doug Black tonight for his years of service to the Salt Waste Advisory uh, Commission and also uh, other activities that he's been involved with through the city. I can tell you that he's been a very valued partner for the council and for the Salt Waste Division. He helped lead the efforts in our single stream efforts and and our global contracting went, went through about seven years ago now. And, um, um, you know, the input we get from our citizens, uh, from the advisory groups, uh, is, is very valuable and it's, it's very much welcomed. And it, it helps us make better decisions. So uh, I just thank you and the council for having these commissions and then uh, for Mr. Black for his years of service um, to the commission, to the city. Doug? Waste management is, I thought, when I got on the committee about 12 years ago, it included sewers, but it didn't. <laughs> but anyhow, um, it's a learning experience, and uh, filling seats on the advisory commission has 
committee has always been an e effort. We have seven positions available. Uh, Mr. Randall uh, is our director, our lead in for the city council at large, and that helps a great deal make a successful program. But uh, the waste management program is a collaborated effort between the folks that work for the city, uh, the contractor, Sunshine Disposal, uh, the, uh, uh, the other things that all fit together make the thing work. It isn't just attending 12 years of meetings, but I appreciate your recognition of this. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, I'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, is there anybody that wishes to pull anything from the consent agenda? Uh, yes, go uh, ahead. Vouchers, please. Payable, if I could have those moved over to the active. Okay. The item C will become item C in the active. Okay. Could and we move Council item Randall? A in the consent to the active? Item A? Yeah. Okay, so that. Council minutes will be now active item D. I have a motion to read the consent agenda as amended. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Accepting the minutes of the November 5th, 2014 Transportation Advisory Commission. <coughs> consent agenda has been read. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion remained and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Moving on to the active agenda. Uh, potential third reading and adoption of Ordinance 4616, which is amending City Code Section 31-85 and Paren D, providing for the naming of streets by resolution. I'll entertain a motion to read Ordinance 4616 for the third time by title only, suspending the rules. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Moving the third reading of Ordinance 4616 by title only, suspending the rules. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston amending Lewiston City Code, Section 31-85D, providing for the naming of streets by resolution and providing an effective date. Okay, Councilors, Ordinance 4616 has been read for the third time. I'll entertain a motion to approve Ordinance 4616. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Okay, next up is a potential third reading and adoption of ordinance 4619, amending the city code section 24-1, providing for an exception to discharging firearms if in defense of persons or property. I'll entertain a motion to read Ordinance 4619 for the third time by title only, suspending the rules. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Approving the third reading of Ordinance 4619 by title only, suspending the rules. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston amending Lewiston City Code, Section 24-1 providing for an exception to discharging firearms if in the defense of persons or property and providing an effective date. Okay, Councilors, Ordinance 4619 has been read for the third time. I'll entertain a motion to approve Ordinance 4619. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Councilor Daniel. Just I wanted to thank uh, Mayor Pro Tem Johnson and the Idaho Second Amendment Alliance for uh, bringing this forward. Yes, and the gentleman, my can't remember his name now, Colby. but uh, Colby. Thank you, Colby, yeah. uh, for bringing that to our attention. And uh, no, I think that's a, a fine correction to the city code. So, 
Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Okay, next up will be vouchers payable 1012 or 102414 through 11614 in the amount of one million one hundred and ten thousand three hundred and eighty five dollars and forty eight cents. Entertain a motion to approve vouchers payable. So moved. Second. No motion a second. Is there a discussion? Yes. Councilor Blakey. Mr. Bennett, I'm I'm gonna make use the word I'm gonna assume here. But I'm looking on page uh, 10 out of 11 at the section for Verizon. And then I have in front of me the, I, I pass around copies of our July vouchers of what we were paying in Inland at the time. And I noticed that <coughs> our, this is the first big Verizon bill that we've gotten since we've, we've contracted with them now um, for, for bulk service. And our bill totaled up, excluding the library, because that was not in a July bill, was 26658 I'm going to make the assumption that there's a bunch of front-loaded costs in there that we obviously aren't going to see every, every month after this. Um, but there's a lot of front-ended front -ended costs. And maybe tonight's not the best night to get the answer because our director of finance isn't here. But is there any comment that you might have on that? Is, is it, is it, is it front-ended right now? There's a bunch of front-end costs for acquisition of phones and or pads or, or whatever else? I, I don't have a specific list or anything like that, but I believe you're correct, counselors, that there are a number of those which have been associated with the, the uh, um, iPads and uh, accessory devices that were, uh, you know, a one-time acquisition to go along with the new Verizon program. What I can do is check into that, find out uh, a better breakdown of specifically which costs uh, are associated with the uh, one-time costs and which are the actual uh, operational charges for those and, and get that information back to you and the council. Yeah, okay. That's fair because I, I said I do have the mm -hmm. July I have the July vouchers and our bill back then was 3887 for cell phone service. And it would be good to see... Uh, can be able to get a comparison now of what our cell phone service will be with all of the one times pulled out. And I suppose we'll probably get a better look at that next month when the vouchers, when we get ready to pay the vouchers then. Yes, I would, uh, I would venture that that is the case, but I will check with uh, Administrative Services Director Marsh all right. All right. when uh, he returns, and uh, I'll have our finance department break that down so we know which charges are associated with equipment that had to be purchased um, for the initial implementation of the system and which of it actually refers to the actual charges for the operation of the system. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because um, before we know it, that six months or so is going to be up, and we talked about putting this back out to RFP um, as it, we would put this possibly back up for bid uh, at, at a one-year anniversary. So we're going to obviously have to give some leeway and some time before that to get, to get out to the public to let them know that Inland has it, can come back and bid this, or anybody else could too, going down the road. So having those numbers will help us make decisions. Okay. I can do that. Sir. Mr. Mr. Randall. Uh, also on the Verizon, um, next time maybe we could have Dan uh, let us know what is inclusive of the executive uh, charge, because the executive charge is quite a bit more than the rest of the uh, departments, so maybe you can help break that down for us. The executive uh, charges include any charges for the city council okay. members. So, for example, iPads pro potentially that were purchased for city council members, etc., cetera, you know, would be charged to that account. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Proto. Um, what falls under legislative then? Well, um, I don't have the breakdown in front of me, um, but it just depends on how they're charged. But uh, the city council would Some be. of the council charges are charged to executive and some are charged to, to the legislative, um, depending on which accounts uh, they're set up under. But I will find that out for you. Um, we can get a breakdown of uh, equipment by department and, um, and then break out what the actual cost of the services is for you. That 
Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, those in favor of approving, approving vouchers payable, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Uh, next item up would be City Council minutes. City Council meeting minutes 825 regular, 922 regular, 1133 work session, and 1110 regular. I'll entertain a motion to approve the City Council meeting minutes. So moved. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there a discussion? Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Randall. I uh, just wondering why we are so late on getting our meeting minutes for August, and then we don't have, also we don't have any meeting minutes for October. So I was wondering if we've got some missing minutes. And, because uh, I know we we did something in October. Well, we had that joint meeting, I know that was one. We also had a work session, also, I'm pretty sure. I thought, I thought the August minutes had gone on a previous meeting agenda. They had not. They're on there now so that they got proper approval. Okay. Are we caught up on October? October, there was one meeting. All right. I think there's two. Uh, one regular joint. meeting for me. Oh. So and the one end. Joint meeting. Right. And it, it was the end of October. There it is. I think there was one toward the first part and one toward the last. Might have been a work session. Yeah. We had a joint meeting with PNC. Yeah, we had a joint Colum meeting. Columbus Day. And was we the did 13th. have one. So we didn't have a second meeting, second week, because of Columbus Day. So we had the. Well, we'll go back and review the minutes to find out which minutes, if any, have not yet uh, come before council that need to be uh, approved, so that we're ca totally caught up with uh, the minutes from our previous meetings. Thank you. Okay, so we're getting back to City Council meeting minutes. All, uh, all those in favor approving the City Council meeting minutes say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Okay, that concludes our active agenda. Uh, on to unfinished new business. Uh, city Councilor comments. Do we have any City Councilor comments tonight? Councilor Blake. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I'm using my cell phone because I'm, I'm reading a letter that I received uh, from a concerned citizen, and I wanted to make sure I had the dates here and everything. Uh, I recently received an email that I did forward to, to Mr. Bennett. Uh, it was from Kelly Carper and his wife, and it was concerning um, some of the activities of some of the kids from Niche, or at least one child in particular, who was on their on his personal property looking in their kitchen windows at 7.45 that night and then later committed a crime uh, at 8 o'clock uh, down the street where he uh, was breaking and entering a home and, uh, and, uh, and attacked a woman. Anyway, in the, the letter's quite lengthy, but both Kelly and Carla expressed their concerns about other safety issues that they've had in the neighborhood there along Carroll Drive, along... Uh, with kids coming into the back, coming into the backyards of homes there. In some cases, just chasing balls that go over the fence. And sometimes the perception is the kids are also prowling the, the backyards, maybe looking around. I live across the street from the park in that same neighborhood, and there have been issues over the years. And I expressed that concern to both, both folks. But I said I would bring that up in the meeting. And again, I did forward the email. To Mr. Bennett, and um, I believe you probably forwarded it on too. Um, I did forward that on to the uh, police department. I, I actually met with Deputy Chief Lanier this morning to discuss this particular situation, um, and he gave me a really good account of the history of the Northwest Children's Home. You know, it's been in the community for a very long time, perhaps as long as 75 years, um, and it uh, it does provide. Um, services to troubled youth in the community and in the Pacific Northwest and uh, the police department works with the staff at the Northwest Children's Home uh, you know on issues involving 
the kids, and, and yes, there are issues. Um, and they are uh, issues that you know are probably going to continue in one form or another because of the nature of the business that the Northwest Children's Home is engaged in. Um, but um, you know, they are following up, obviously, on this particular case to make sure that uh, uh, everything that needs to be done uh, uh, to protect the safety of the residents in that area and to uh, address the uh, actions by that individual are, are taken care of. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Um, just got a brief one. I got also received an email from a, a concerned business owner. She's just recently opened up a business down on Main Street, and her concern was smoking on the sidewalks and she has a business out there and there are people that frequent several businesses down there that have a tendency to stand out on the sidewalks and smoke and was wondering if there was a way we could put some sort of a ban on smoking within you know 25 feet i don't know if that's feasible or not but i was hoping for her to be here tonight she had uh, well, sounded kind of excited about being here but uh, maybe we'll i'll contact her and see if she can't come and talk to us again see what her ideas are. Uh, the other one is uh, after the last meeting we had uh, right before Veterans Day, um, I think I said I was invited to go to Juniper Meadows for their Veterans Day celebration and present plaques. And I believe me, I was honored and humbled to be part of that, um, seeing these folks and some of the old guys reminded me of my dad. If he was still here, he'd be the same age as those guys. And uh, they were very appreciative of getting recognized for their service to the country. And uh, and it wasn't just World War II vets either. There were some Korean War vets and Vietnam vets in there. And, and uh, so anyways, Labor Day or <laughs> Veterans Day, I think was uh, pretty well promoted in this town. And, and uh, I'm, I'm grateful to the citizens for supporting our vets. So. That's all I have. City manager comments? Mr. Bennett? Well, we will go ahead and, and uh, note that for the record, um, we will be having only one city council meeting in December at this point, unless needed. So that will be on December 8th in, in two weeks. Uh, we will have a work session on December 1st. Um, the focus of that uh, work session will be on the community park. We will have one active agenda item on there that we need to take care of, uh, which is to uh, conduct the public hearing for the uh, 2013 CDBG uh, CAPER program. And uh, Tanya Arnett from the Community Development Department will be there to make that presentation, but it should be uh, brief. So that will be uh, the next couple of meetings that will take us basically until the first of the year. Okay. Okay, advisory board and commission appointments. Um, I actually have one this evening. Uh, Wes McCoy has applied to take over for Josh Wadsworth on the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, I've known Wes for quite some time professionally and socially, and uh, he's been on the uh, Code Board of Appeals. He works for All West Testing. He used to work for the City of Lewiston be after he was working for All West. Now he's back with All West, and I'm uh, Wes will be a, a, a good example or a, a, a good representative on the uh, on the PNZ, uh, and I'd like to thank Mr. Wadsworth for his time. Yeah, he's just in a position now where he, a he's a contractor, b he's got the kids at that age, where there's a lot of social things going on, sports and what have you. So uh, I do thank him for his service, but uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, appoint Wes McCoy to the Planning and Zoning Commission. So second. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 12 to 7. Or 12 to 7. Mm -hmm. 7 to 0. Sorry. Just looking at something else here. Uh, any other advisory board and commission appointments? Councilor Collins. Mr. Mayor, uh, we have uh, two appointments we'd like to, to make this evening with, with motions uh, for Historic Preservation Commission, the first of which is Gary Bush. I'd like to move that uh, uh, he be appointed to the Historic Preservation Commission. Second. Any motions have been made and seconded for Gary Bush to be appointed to the Historic Preservation Commission. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. And then we have a, a second position I'd like to entertain a motion for as well for Anne-Marie Emerson on the same commission. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries seven to zero. Uh, following up on Mr. Black's comments for them this evening and Councilor Randall still looking for three positions on three the positions waste. now on the South West <coughs> Commission and we'll be coming um, up with discussions on uh, the landfill too so okay it'd be important to get somebody if we can you bet uh, anybody interested please contact Carrie and if you uh, put in 12 years on the South Waste Advisory Commission you get a handshake and a plaque so you got that going for you uh, work session agenda topics or are we any new ones for this evening or no nope. okay well that can concludes our business for now uh, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session re personnel Idaho code section 67 dash two three four five and parens one and friend B so move second Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. We'll take a four minute break. And we will re reconvene. Yeah. Oh. That's been freaking me out, but I think he's been on.